Welcome to Every Nation Dorado Congregation. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Here's a look at this week's announcement. To ensure your safety and the safety of others, we ask that you wear your mask at all our services and events at all times. Today is Communion Sunday. We will be sharing communion today after the message. We encourage you to take this moment now to prepare your communion elements. Join us every Monday as we fast and pray corporately. We meet for face-to-face -face prayer between 5.30 to 7 p.m. Please note that every first Monday of the month, the men meet live at the church and the women meet on Zoom at 6 p.m. The Zoom link for the women will be provided on our WhatsApp comms on Mondays. We will have our next child dedication on the 28th of November. Please take note that our pre-dedication class on Saturday, the 27th of November at 2 p.m. is a prerequisite to our dedication on Sunday. Sign up your child by registering on our website or at our info desk. We Care is launching our Christmas boxes for the Children's Cancer Wards. Boxes will be available from Sunday the 31st of October at our offices. We will provide you with a list of items to be placed inside the box. Once you have filled the box, Please deliver it at our church office, which is open on Monday to Thursday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Fridays. Thank you for blessing the little ones. As you can see, we are in the process of constructing our building and every dollar counts. You can partner with us through the Pay Today app or you can find our banking details for the building fund on our website on the gift page. Let us join hands to pray and give towards Vision 2021. We value your growth. Connect groups are small groups where we help you to follow Jesus, fish for the lost, and fellowship with other believers. Sign up at our info table to join or lead a connect group. Visit our website for any additional information at www ianventuk.org Enjoy the service. Hello everyone and welcome once again to our online church platform. It's always a blessing for us to be able to bring the Word of God to you and we're excited always to be able to minister in this way uh, in light of the circumstances where we are. Despite that, we are having our live services at the moment, so please join us as well, either at the 8.30 or at the 10.30 service or in the evening at the six o'clock service. And um, we, we have a special highlight regarding our men's prayer that we had the last Monday, a fantastic time that we had touching on some uh, very pertinent matters that came out of the Sunday message. And just the men were just praying specifically in certain areas of their personal lives and their families and their communities, looking at their upbringing and their, their parents and all of that just covering everything in the blood of Jesus. And we're excited concerning what God is doing in the prayer meetings. The ladies were on the Zoom as well, and that will continue to happen when the men are having the live prayer in the service, um, in the prayer service on Monday with the fasting. The ladies will be fasting and they will be having the, the, the Zoom online. And uh, we've also received great feedback concerning that. Uh, today is also our communion Sunday, so please get together uh, your elements, your, your grape juice or your wine and your bread so that at the end you can have communion with your family or wherever you are on your own. And then I also just want to remind us once again that we are in the process of building and uh, the Lord's hand is really upon us and there's a lot of progress that's taking place. And we are looking forward to completing the top of the building and the roof sheeting as well, actually commencing this, this, this past week. And so we want to really encourage you to partner financially with what God is doing and uh, that you will be prayerful and ask the Lord how he would have you partner 
with this. You know, one of the things that came up also in the men's prayer was just that conviction by one of the gentlemen saying that he is, is, his devotion for the house of the Lord needed to show up a little bit more in the manner in which he was devoted to his partnership financially with the building. And so that's our encouragement. And we know that God's blessing is flowing in our lives and that we will continue to excel in the grace of giving as we continue to partner with the building. So let us pray and then we'll get into our message. We started a new series last week called Overcoming Evil. And today we're dealing with open doors to the demonics. And so we're going to address that. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that as your word goes out, Father God, I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will break every yoke and will set the captive free. I pray for revelation. I pray, Lord God, for insight that the enemy's works will be exposed and destroyed. I pray, Lord God, that this will not just be another message, Father, but I pray, God, that people will really be enlightened and that they'll be set free and that the enemy's chains will be broken in people's lives and that many will be able to testify of your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last week we started with our first week on the series called Overcoming Evil and we've spoken about uh, the, the subject of not against flesh and blood. We'll touch a little bit uh, today as well on that. Uh, this week, today, we're talking about open doors to the demonic. And then next week is the culmination of the series. We'll be closing the se series with keys to victory over evil. And it will be a deliverance and prayer service specifically. We'll try and minister that way online as well. And so we want to encourage you to, to prepare your heart for that day, to prepare your heart for that encounter. You know, the Word of God really reveals to us the keys to liberty and freedom. And many times it involves us. It involves our surrender. It, it involves our faith in Christ and in surrendering ourselves. And so we are excited. There were already a couple of manifestations last Sunday in the service of people really being delivered. There was the one lady in the evening service. You might think that this is bizarre. Uh, we were praying for the one lady in the evening service that came with a spirit of infirmity and other uh, demonic uh, attacks upon her life. And as we were ministering to her, commanding the, the, the wickedness to leave her, she started to cough and to vomit. And uh, right next to her, there was a small scorpion that came out. And we, we trampled it, and we could see that really there was a freedom that came about. And so the message last week about not against flesh and blood... Many people take for granted that revelation, but once you begin to have it, it really gives you much of an advantage against the enemy because he can no longer act behind the scenes and uh, in the dark as he deceives and tries to ruin people's lives. All right, so today we're talking about open doors to the demonic. Our key scripture from last week, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And so the Word of God is very clear that our fight as believers, as Christians, as human beings even, is not really against others. But the enmity between brother and brother, the enmity between mother and, 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 and daughter, father and son and friends, all of that is provoked from the unseen realm. Either through the original sin which came in through Adam, through the, the, the temptation of Satan, or through the demonic activities that are currently taking place in people's lives and in people's families. Now, there's a great question that comes up many times as we're addressing the subject of open doors to the demonic. The question comes up that, oh, I'm, but I thought I was born again. How can I have a demon? How can I be possessed or, or oppressed and all of that? Uh, the, a, a great illustration would be similar to sickness. As much as someone is born again, and as much as Christ 
by his stripes made provision for healing in the body, still there are viruses, there are bacteria, there are all sorts of things that attack the body and that still try to invade the body, despite the fact that Christ has made available healing in the atonement. And so in the same way that those kind of evil things still try to affect and affect our lives, in the same way there are illegal evil spirits that can begin to oppress and influence and tempt and harass and deceive our lives and sometimes to the point of controlling our thinking because of the ministration that is taking place and the word of God is very clear that we are to resist the enemy we are to take our authority in Christ and if we are born again that is much easier to do but many times when we open doors to the enemy we'll begin to give the enemy an opportunity the word of God says that you become the slave to the one whom you obey and many times we believe we call ourselves Christians and we live as if we 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 follow the devil because of the lifestyle that we are entertaining and the the and the, and the sinful habits that we are allowing in our lives and it's an opportunity that the enemy takes and the word of God is clear in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against rulers and against authorities against the cosmic powers heavenly powers over this present darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says this speaking also about not allowing your anger to take over your life and not letting the sun go down on your anger and allowing your life to, uh, to have strife. This very key scripture in verse 27 is what we are highlighting this, this uh, afternoon or whenever you're listening. It says, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. In parentheses, it says, give no opportunity to him. It says, in another version, do not give the devil any foothold. Do not give him an opportunity. Now, this is the picture that you ought to have in your mind, right? That if there is an intruder at the door of your home, the way that that intruder would gain access is either the door is wide open. But the presumption is that the life of the, of the believer should not have open doors and windows at all. It should be shut to anything that is not of God. But many times, either out of ignorance or deliberate actions, people have left doors open in their lives, windows open in their lives, and they have not closed them. Or at times they do have a closed door, but the enemy comes and tempts them and knocks on the door and begins to entice them. And what they tend to do is open the door a little bit and look through that, that corner to say, who's there? <laughs> and at that very moment, someone can shove their shoulder and put the foot in the door. And immediately when you do that, when, when the intruder does that and they have a foot in the door, they have an opportunity now to force their way in, especially if there are reinforcements behind them, if there are others that are able to gain access. So the, the, the secure believer is the one whose door is locked and who doesn't look outside to try and figure out if it might be something that I'm interested in. No, you are complete in Christ. You are to discover what Christ has made available for you so that there is no temptation that is gaining access into your life. It says, leave no room or foothold for the devil. And it says, give him no opportunity. This is the way that we ought to live. We are to live in such a way that no temptation gains ground in our lives. And you might say, is that even possible? The word of God says it is. But many times our minds need to be renewed. We need to be in a place of liberty. And if we used to be an unbeliever living in a lifestyle that allowed demons to come in, obviously we need to get rid of those things. And then we need to shut those doors. And the Holy Spirit needs to fill every room. And many times it so happens that in other areas, in certain areas of the person's life, things are going well. But then there's one or two rooms where the enemy is given an opportunity, where deception is reigning, where the truth is no longer reigning in that place. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 8 says this, Like a city whose walls are broken down is a person who lacks self-control. 
Look here, it says, like a city whose walls are broken down is a person who lacks self-control. And so the walls of the city are the protective element of the city. If a city has high walls, you consider this, the, the walls of Jericho, the invasion of is Israel into the land of Canaan, the, the walls were meant to be the protective agent. And when the walls came down, the whole entire nation became vulnerable. In the same way, every believer, every human being, every child ought to have walls in their lives that protect them. They, had, they, they ought to have a hedge around their lives. And it is God's intention that in collaboration with the Holy Spirit, that those walls around your life are not broken down. Because the enemy will go looking for an opportunity, uh, scouting around your city, scouting around your life, scouting around your body, scouting around your walk with God to try and find a gap. And if he sees a gap, he is going to take it. And the word of God is clear and says that one of the key measures that keeps an exposure or a vulnerability like that is a lack of self-control. Now, most of the people who, who are not a spirit-filled will not have self-control as a fruit of the spirit. And God desires that your will and that your conscience and that your life is so preserved and innocent that when temptation and when things come along your door, there's enough knowledge, there's enough revelation, there's enough insight to be able to keep you from giving the enemy an opportunity. And most of the time when your wall is broken, it is not just a quick fix. There is a situation in your life where things are coming in and coming out and the enemy always uses the same access point to ruin your life. Now, we're going to look here in the ministry of Jesus from Luke chapter 11 through to uh, uh, verse, six, uh, verse 14 to 26. And it's going to show us a little bit of uh, uh, demonology and the study concerning how demons operate through the words of Jesus Christ. And at the end, we'll highlight the specific doors in people's lives that allow demonic activity in. And it doesn't mean that when your door happens to be open, that there's always an entrance at every time, at every opportunity. And most of the time, that's why people take their chances. But they never know when it is when the snake is going to bite them. And so God wants us to be prudent in wisdom in approaching our lives so that we are shunning evil at every point and in every opportunity. So let's go here, Luke chapter 11, verse 14. It says, Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Beelzebub, the, the, the lord of the flies is the translation from the Greek. By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Verse 16, others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Verse 17, and Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined or cannot stand and a house divided against itself will fall verse 18 so jesus is responding to their statement that he's using the, the devil's power to cast out devils which is a contradiction in itself and that's why jesus is saying look any kingdom that is casting itself out how will it be able to stand if there's division in the ranks of the enemy Verse 18, if Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. You know, many times you hear people that say, yeah, you know, they are using magic powers or evil powers at church to cast out evil spirits. Jesus right here is dispelling that kind of thinking. He says that demons don't come out because other demons are casting them out through some preacher. No, the name of Jesus is always enforcing. Whether the preacher might not be good in the state where he is, the name of Jesus is always enforcing the, the power of the Holy Spirit 
to drive out evil and, and iniquitous and, and destructive spirits. And this is why every believer ought to, be, ought to be confident in the ministry of casting out evil spirits. Because if some false teacher or false prophet or false deceived preacher uses the name of Jesus, and this happened in the Gospels where there were men, sons of, of, of a, a priest called Sceva, they were casting out evil spirits using the name of Jesus. And this was their phrasing. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. This was in the ministry of Paul. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, we command you, come out. And the one time the evil spirit spoke out and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And so they were being quite successful in using the name of Jesus to cast out evil spirits. There's even another time that the disciples of Jesus turned to him and say, Lord, we met these guys who were casting out evil spirits using your name and they were not part of our group. And Jesus said, allow them. If they are not scattering, then they are gathering. If they are not against us, they are with us, you know. Allow them. And so the power of the name of Jesus is the agent. The authority in that name, applied with faith, is the agent that drives out evil work. And so then Jesus continues in verse 19. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? He's asking the critics who are also teachers of the law. So then they will be your judges. Verse 20. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Wonderful. So what he's saying here is that when there's demonic activity in the life of someone and that demonic activity is stopped and the doors are closed and the evil spirits are driven out, then the kingdom of God has come upon that person. The dominion of God has come upon that person. The will of God can now begin to be exerted in the life of that person. Until then, there is a contest between the will of God and the will of the evil spirits that are dominating the life of that person verse 21 he continues Jesus continues to explain and he says when a strong man fully armed guards his own house his possessions are safe but when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder whoever is not with me is against me and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so Jesus here is highlighting the operation of, of how evil spirits in possessing the life of someone have this approach of being a strong man that is fully armed and is guarding a territory and has certain possessions inside the life of the person. And it says someone stronger has to attack, has to confront that evil spirit, has to overpower that evil spirit, and he has to remove his armor, remove his weapons, and then he is able to take out and, and divide the plunder, so to speak, and the, 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 uh, rescue the person and the value and the dignity that is hidden in that person. You know, sometimes we have this approach of really uh, um, dealing with people that are actually facing demonic activity in a way as if they are the ones that are doing all these things, which in part they are. But because of the dominion of the evil spirit, they are victims. The word of God says that Jesus was anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to, to declare liberty to the captives. And they are, they are captives of deception, captives of demonic oppression, captives of demonic uh, affliction, and sometimes possession. And you will see when you confront that evil spirit, that the evil spirit actually manifests and begins to say, no, this is mine. This person is mine. No, I will not let them go. No, I have been here long enough. No, I have this right and that right. And the church and the believer and the ministers need to rise up against the 
person in there, the, the personality of the evil spirit, the unclean spirit, not against the human being that is being tormented, but against the personality that is hidden there and expose them and overpower them and confront them and command them to live. And in our church, we are going to see more and more and more of this. And I know that there are people who don't like that. <laughs> and it makes you wonder, why not? Why would you not want someone in the church to be free of demonic activity? Why would you not want them to finally be in a place where their mind is clearing up and they can finally truly repent in their heart and truly begin to follow Christ? And so this is the ministry of Jesus, what he did, we will do. Then we continue in Luke chapter 11 verse 24. He continues to explain. So this is amazing how Jesus is giving this detail and we can really follow this. And then he says this, when an impure or an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Very interesting. It's showing the character and the behavior of demonic evil spirits in the sense that they are looking for opportunity. Just like it says in Peter about how the enemy, your enemy is like a lion prowling around looking for whom he may devour. I'm reminded of the time when, the, uh, when uh, in the book of Job, it says how the sons of God had come before God and even Satan was among them. And God asked him, where have you been? He said, I've been going around to and fro throughout the earth, looking, looking for opportunity. And then God says, but did you consider my servant Job? You know, the man is blameless. All his doors are closed. His walls are up, you know. And so it shows the character of Satan in pursuit of a place. It says when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Now there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, this is exactly why I don't want people to be delivered in church because me, I'm there, my kids are there. And what if that evil spirit comes out of the person and just tries to find a place and goes straight into me? <laughs> And so Jesus does not give this indication because when someone, when an evil spirit is cast out, they are, they leave the place where that is happening. But it is indeed true that we are all to be in a good place with God, in a place where we are not allowing the enemy to just come in. And most of the time when you're under deliverance ministry, not just anyone can pick up anything. But if you're going to be in that ministry, you ought to make sure that your life is not having open doors so that there's no opportunity for the enemy. So this is a warning, of course. We are not playing around. This is not about playing deliverance ministry. We are dealing with a, a, a personality that is murderous, that is really after uh, destroying people's lives. But we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices and deceptions, and we are able to subdue that enemy and, and cast the evil spirit out, and it will be sent to the place where the Lord sends it. Now look here what Jesus says, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid or dry places seeking rest and does not find it. And then it says, I will return to the house I left. And that person that was delivered last Sunday, I will return to that person. And verse 25, when it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Verse 26, then it goes and it takes it doesn't just come in by itself. Look at the wickedness and the personality here. It, it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself. Wow. More wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. So what is the lesson here? That every person, when they come out of darkness into light, when they are born again, they ought to have a clean up exercise. And we have this at our victory weekend, at our victory encounter, where um, uh, after you've done the four chapters of the one-to-one -one in, your, in your discipleship and in your connect group, you then go to your victory encounter, where we go through lists of things where people have done that open doors in their lives and potential issues that are there and demonic uh, activity that might still be remaining. And we completely clean the house out 
And then after that, we go to baptism on that Sunday. And then we baptize people also in the Holy Spirit. So we fill the house with the Holy Spirit. But many times what people do is after that, if they are tempted by the enemy, because remember, look what it says. It will return to the house. And when it finds the house in order, it tries to come in. And what it will try and do is try and cause you to open a door that if it doesn't allow for possession, it will allow for affliction. It will allow for oppression. It will allow for deception. And this is why just because you are born again and filled with the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you're not battling the enemy because our fight is not against flesh and blood, but, but against the spiritual forces in our lives. And we ought to not give the devil any opportunity and we should keep the door closed. Verse 26, it says, it takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and live there and the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Now, now many people ask, okay, but if the evil spirit wants to come in, where's the Holy Spirit? Where, in which part? You know, spiritual things are not like natural things. As much as we want to distinguish, it's only the word of God that can distinguish between soul and spirit and bone and marrow. But the word of God clearly says that he who is married to the Lord is one spirit with him. The Holy Spirit comes in and fills your spirit man. But then there is your, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then there is your body that can get afflicted physically. And all of those things need to be cleaned out, need to be cleansed, need to be purified and maintained clean through the Word of God, through prayer, through the time that you spend with the Lord in, in clearing out all the attempts of the enemy. And it should not be done out of a place of fear. It should be done out of a place of enforcing every victory that Jesus Christ has made available on the cross. Hallelujah. And so it's very clear that people's lives can be vulnerable. One, if they allow the enemy in. Two, if they don't build the walls that God wants to build in their lives in order to make sure that nothing prevails over them. And next week we'll talk about specifically the keys to overcoming the devil, overcoming demons in your life, specific keys. But we're talking today about the doors. Now we touched on it last week a little bit, and I'm going to highlight certain things, and this is not a closed uh, uh, list, but Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 explains very clearly certain things that are, are manifestations of the sinful nature of, of the flesh, which clearly give us an idea. And this is the, the important element that people ought to understand, that if Christ has set you free, your life should be for freedom. There should be not, no habit, no addiction. There should be no affliction, no terminal sickness, no, no continual uh, uh, torment at night that you should be comfortable with. Because many times people have become comfortable with that and they are uh, almost entertaining the harassment of the enemy when Christ has already paid the price. And once you've been set free, come on, it behooves us to remain free, to increase in the levels of freedom that we enjoy so that the enemy becomes someone that is at bay in our lives. And at that point, we are no longer trying to keep the enemy out of our lives. We are now fighting battles on behalf of our family, on behalf of our household, on behalf of our church, on behalf of the ministry where we are involved and serving. On behalf, You ought to be fighting battles there and not here today. But the true reality is that many people, even believers, are fighting and struggling with demonic issues, even as we speak. But thank God that the Holy Spirit is here and he came to set everybody free in Jesus' name. So what are these doors that people can open? We spoke last week about the fact that number one, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. If you join yourself to another person, you become one flesh with that person. There is such an emotional bonding that is taking place that there can be an exchange and a transfer of evil spirits at that point. <laughs> Some may say, yes, but what if I'm married to someone who is not saved? 
What if I'm married to an unbeliever? The word of God says that the, the, un, the unmarried or the unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believing spouse and therefore their children are also sanctified. So there is a power, there is a sanctifying grace in the life of the believer, but it still begins to open the door to a di dysfunction. The enemy uses that opportunity to come into your life and to take you out. And it is God's will that these doors be closed. And how do you close these doors? We'll talk more about that next week. But these doors ought to be closed by renouncing certain practices with your mouth. You have to say, I no longer accept this. I renounce this practice. I renounce that idea. I renounce this kind of sentiment. I renounce these suicidal thoughts. I renounce this selfishness. I, I renounce this uh, masturbation and pornography. I renounce it. And once you do that, then you have to get to the place where you're repenting. And if someone needs to minister and pray with you, that you actually take the time to get that ministry time. So that if there's anything that's in your soul or in your body hiding there, that thing can come out. And what we usually see is the manifestation of those things coming out. And they can be diverse. So sexual immorality, major door. Um, hostility and dissension. Hatred and unforgiveness. You know, many times bad things happen in our lives. It is not about the bad things that happen in our lives, but it's how we respond. Because Jesus said, the one who doesn't forgive, there is a torment that takes place in their lives. As much as Christ has made forgiveness available, there is a law of the Spirit that unforgiveness invites torment. And you are the one that is afflicting yourself by not forgiving. As much as what was done to you was wrong, that is a trap that the enemy uses to afflict people's lives, especially in their minds and then also in their bodies. Certain physical conditions, certain mental conditions as a result of a certain trauma that had taken place. Other things involves impurity, lust, lustful pleasures, um, idolatry. False worship, you know, getting involved in certain kinds of occultic practices and sorcery, witchcraft, and all these cultural practices that we say, no, this is my culture. I go to a palm reader. I go to someone who, who can tell me my future. All of those things that are outside of the will of God are doors that you are opening to the enemy, to oppress you, to afflict you, to destroy your life, to deceive you, to get you to a place where you are not hearing from God clearly, to get you to a place where you can even commit your suicide against yourself because you are opening doors to evil and wicked spirits of death and etc. Outbursts of anger, jealousy, strife. The word of God says in the book of James, where there is strife, there is confusion and every evil work every evil work and so the enemy uses all of these things in families as children are growing up in a home where mom and dad are always quarreling always fighting be careful you are inviting a perception in the mind of your children that is making them vulnerable to familiar spirits that are able to minister to them and say no i won't ever do this making vows and things like that that invite not the holy spirit but invite emotional and all sorts of other kinds of things that begin to be attached to their lives and they carry it into the next generation, into their marriage as well. Another thing that we mentioned last week is drunkenness. Drunkenness, being under the influence of alcohol, being under the influence of drugs, any kind of thing that takes away your consciousness. Be careful. Be careful. The realm of the spirit, many times when you talk to people who are addicted to drugs or you get into all sorts of trances and, and, and are involved with, with ecstasy or other kinds of things, even if they are artists, you know, I just want it for the inspiration of the music. I usually take this kind of drug when I'm about to write my songs for the people so that I'm just free, when I'm about to paint my painting and just get that inspiration. You know, the Holy Spirit for the believer, the Holy Spirit is more than enough intoxication more than enough drunkenness, more than enough in order to get you into an inspired place. But when people do this, they, 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 they must realize that they need to be careful because the enemy is looking on the wall of your life to see if there's an opportunity. Other things is in the dream realm. You know, we've said this before in the church, dreams are not just dreams. 
There are times when you're just having some kind of normal thought, your, your thoughts are being processed, but most of the time, your dreams are not just dreams. They are part of the realm of the spirit. And your spirit is participating in that realm. And many times people say, no, there's this thing that comes to me at night and we have sexual intercourse together and I, I actually have, uh, um, I ejaculate and all of that and there's a sexual experience and there is an intimacy that begins to form between the individual and this person in the dream. And many have said, no, it's just a wet dream. Oh, it's just, no, there are such things as spiritual husbands and spiritual wives that come to people in the night whenever they're sleeping and there are afflictions. Those things can cause people to be driven into promiscuous behavior, can cause people to be driven into not wanting to be with their spouse sexually. And most people think, no, it's just a dream. I'm not even going to tell my wife or my husband that I'm struggling with this for many years. But that is sometimes the very thing that is against your home. And so we, we must be alert. We'll talk about this next week, about how, how is it that you can detect these things and then begin to be alert. But please be careful. Another thing is the, the gates of your eyes, the gates of your ears. Very important gates, because if your eyes are, are, are full of light, your whole body is full of light. But if your eyes are dark, your whole body will be dark. And so whatever you watch, whatever you take into your eyes, be very careful. Be very careful. Let, your, you know, let the Holy Spirit be an umpire and say, no, let's not watch this. Put this off. Let's, let's watch something else. Let's, let's, you know, there are many good things that a person can watch. Even certain music, demonically inspired, that is opening the door. And be careful what your children watch. Be careful what your children listen to. Be careful when the radio is just playing and it's all sorts of things that are just coming through. These are all things that the enemy, he is very cunning. He is trying his best to find the gap. And if we are careless about it, he will have a foothold and there will be oppression in our lives. In Jesus' name. Other things, selfish ambition, pride. Pride. It's the devil's sin. Pride can be one of the major doors that invites all sorts of deception. Demonic deception. You might not get possessed, but you will definitely be listening to a voice that is not of God. You'll be thinking that you are on the right path and you are not. You'll be deceived and no one will be able to tell you. And you'll be able, some people because of pride have backslided from the faith. And so today we're talking about open doors. Witchcraft. When, when you're born... Be careful when, when your children are born, anyone that wants to come around and lay hands on them and, and to do whatever family ritual, be careful. Be careful when you notice that your children are having nightmares of all sorts. Don't just let it go. Engage them in prayer. Warfare this thing. Speak against it. Fight against it in prayer. And you'll begin to see that the enemy doesn't like to be resisted. The word of God says resist him and he will flee. Because he knows that there is a name that is above every other name that is being used against him. And there is a Holy Spirit that is a fiery spirit, a consuming fire that can burn away things in the life of the believer. But most of the time it's the believers that are grieving the Holy Spirit and allowing the enemy a foothold in their lives. In their lives. We're going to take some communion right now. And... Uh, Prepare ourselves for the next week when we'll pray specifically into these areas and just begin to cut them off. But even as I'm speaking, I know the Holy Spirit has been highlighting to you different areas in your life where you see a cycle, where you know this is not God's will, where you can sense something is not right. Don't just ignore those kind of things. And some of you might say, yeah, I don't want, you know, to, to be super spiritual and spiritualize everything. You know, now I, I failed my maths because I didn't study and now it was a demon because I watched uh, some horror movie last night or I had a dream uh, last night and all. Don't mock like that. Please 
Refrain from that. If you are too foolish in these areas, rather keep quiet, go to the Word of God and learn. The Holy Spirit will teach you. But rather, let us be cautious on the side of resisting the enemy and avoiding evil than allowing every kind of practice that comes through the cultural machine of television and music to come into our lives and we are just adopting it through our TikToks and through our Instagrams and we are just following what people are doing. There are massive trends that the devil is doing on a cosmic level, on a national level, on an international level. There are entire principalities that dominate what is happening in the land. But the Holy Spirit is over the church and over the people of God. And if we are willing to obey him and follow him, that dominion of the Spirit of God begins to encroach into our lives, cover our life, cover our family, then begins to stretch to our extended family, begins to stretch to our workplace, then evil is no longer tolerated. It's no longer nice when this brother is around. We can't swear nicely. We can't drink nicely. We can't, you know, because they know that there is an opposing spirit. And that, that is how it should be because the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this is it. God has not given us a spirit of fear. This is what Paul tells Timothy. That we are not to be afraid of the devil. But Let's not be ignorant of his devices. We have authority in the spirit to command evil spirits to come out of people, to come out of our lives, to stop their activity. To, we, are, we are able to rebuke them, right? Not just inside people, but around them, inspiring them, doing all sorts of things. And then we have the responsibility to disciple them and to strengthen the walls and to strengthen the doors and to strengthen the locks and to strengthen the windows. Because inside the house, there's air conditioning of the Holy Spirit anyway. It's not going to be claustrophobic. We are excited because inside is the kingdom. Outside there is utter darkness and evil. And so we keep the worldliness from coming inside by preserving the condition of the temple of the Holy Spirit. And for those of you, if you are not born again, step number one, <laughs> you are an open door. Step number one, you must be born again. Must be born again and get baptized and get filled with the Holy Spirit. Once that happens, then the transformation will take place. Let me pray for those of you who want to give your life to Christ right now. If that's you, lift your hands wherever you are right now and say this with me. Heavenly Father, I hear your voice today. I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that in three days he was risen from the dead. Today, I invite Christ into my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Be the master of my life. Let every other wicked spirit leave me. I renounce evil in my life. Go ahead and renounce all kinds of sins that will be highlighted now in your mind. Father, we renounce these things. And I invite the Holy Spirit into my life. From today, I receive eternal life. I receive forgiveness of sins. And I declare that I'm born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, contact us and we'll get you discipled and strengthened. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. As, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And to, today, as we are taking communion, consider that someone was crushed. Someone was beaten and bruised and broken. And someone was stabbed. And a crown of thorns was put on his head. He bled for our freedom. Let us no longer, Galatians chapter 5, don't use your freedom as an occasion for the flesh and open the door to the enemy and get into bondage again. But allow the freedom that you have to be the place where Christ can rule and reign with the light and the love of the kingdom. So let's partake right now of the bread. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, for everyone who's taking communion now, if there's anything that is not of God in their body, in their, in their soul, as we are taking of this communion, that they'll be delivered right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's partake.
And then he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, the covenant that forgives sins, the covenant that is by grace through faith. This blood is what washes away sin, not only in our conscience, but out of our lives. And so Father, we bless this cup and we pray that everyone who partakes of this, Lord, that addictions will begin to break and that they'll begin to experience freedom in their lives from sin, from affliction, from condemnation in Jesus' name. And that conviction and innocence will return to their conscience in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the cup. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody who's watching. You have become traumatized because of the divorce of your parents. And since that time, you've been having these night terrors on and attacks of the enemy. And you started to cut yourself and afflict yourself in your body. This is an evil spirit that has done this. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to that wicked spirit. You wicked spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus, leave her now leave her now we see you we command you we expose you in the name of jesus and we command you to leave her now in jesus name now be delivered be free now in jesus name you cannot stay we we, we are against you in the name of the lord jesus christ leave her now right where you are just renounce that suicidal uh, spirit renounce it in your life and you'll begin to see the love of god coming to fill your heart there's another one there's a family that's about to split up i see also out of divorce the mother is going to take one child or two children and the father the other one and god is saying this is not of god and we break that thing in jesus name we come against it in jesus name and god is saying repent and and you humble yourselves and and you will see uh, restoration in your lives. All right, we are out of time. We will see you next Sunday, but continue to minister unto the Lord. Continue to believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and freedom is your portion in every way. Resist the devil, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Use the name of Jesus. Take up the name of Jesus with faith in your heart and you will conquer in every area. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful, blessed week. We will see you soon. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.